welcome back to JG3 Reviews. My name is James and today I've got a fountain pen I want to share with you. This is the Moonman M600S and you may, if you're familiar with Parker Dual Folds or one of the you know billion spin-off pens that look just like it made over the last hundred years, then you're familiar with the design. I'm going to leave that to others to talk about the similarity uh, overall with the Parker design. That's That's been done and done several times by a lot of people. I want to look at this pen on its own merit. So that's how we're going to review this today. This one is a really nice, uh, the seller I got it from calls it tiger eye or amber resin. And I really, really like this. If you saw the unboxing video the other day, you saw this pen out in the sun. Just a really cool look. So let's dive into this pen. It's the M600 with a Moonman nib. And uh, we'll see how it writes. We'll talk about the design and uh, that that cool resin. So let's spin the camera and get started. Okay, so this is the M600 and this resin, let's go there first. That is kind of the, the star attraction in this pen, I think. This resin is referred to either as amber on by some sellers or as tiger eye. The one I got it from referred to it as tiger eye. I think you can see why. This is just a really cool uh, and, and, and you do see tiger-themed colors here. Really nice resin. Uh, would not have been uh, necessarily my first choice just as a, a gut pick, but the more I looked at it, the more I liked it, and I just think that is a cool resin. So you've probably already noticed that this pen has a lot of familiar notes. So this pen is a... Uh, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Copy, steal, uh, uh, homage, you, you pick your word. Uh, but this is definitely a Parker, a, ooh, I can't talk, a Parker duofold uh, pin. So, but there are lots of those. And uh, just a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago maybe, um, Douglas Rathbun inter uh, interviewed, no, reviewed, this pen, in in fact, in the same resin, uh, and he he went into the whole thing about copying, stealing, faking, homaging, and all of that. And because that's that is a constant topic, I'm not going to get into it though. Uh, I think he covered that well. Uh, so it is. It's it's definitely based on the Parker Dual Fold, as are many many other pens for a century now. Uh, but it's an interesting design and it's it's a classic design uh, and I'm going to look at it from this vantage point today. Did Moon Man do a good job of it? That's, that's going to be my question. I'm going to review this pen on its own merits even if the design itself is not of its own merit. You get where I'm going. So anyway, uh, let's look at the clip. The clip is uh, sort of a spin on the arrow which what, what pen company uh, in this price range does not have at least one pen with the arrow? Goodness. Uh, then, of course, the two bands are also uh, straight off the other pen. Of course, this is this is just a plastic end cap. You're not going to unscrew this and, and anything like that because this is a, cart a cartridge converter pen. But this and the ring, all very reminiscent. But is it well done? Yes, yes it is. This is really well put together pen. The polish on this is nice. Uh, the rings, you know, there are some pens that when they have rings like this, there is a catch. They didn't quite smooth them enough. Now these are done very, very well. Uh, you know, I don't know about the durability of the finish, but I can tell you this, those are well polished and smoothed and uh, just well done. Everything about this pen uh, is, is really quite well done when you consider uh, the price of it. This one I paid uh, in the low 20s, I believe, on Amazon. So I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, but really a, a very good price when you consider the resin and that it does seem to be quite well made. So should I have counted those? Some of you like to know how many turns. Let's see here. So there is... Whoop, there is one, two, three. So just maybe just under three turns to get off the cab. So that's that's good enough for an everyday pen. The nib. Let's take a look at this. This is the Moonman nib. 
like some other pens, you can swap this out. This is just a, a number six nib, and you can put in there a Goulet or a uh, probably a, a Nemesine or what am I thinking of? Bach, all those guys. You 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 can swap those out. This is a fine nib, and that's just standard fare. It's a fine nib, plastic section. The tines are well aligned. It writes well. I have. Uh, no complaints, and when we look at the writing test here, uh, you'll see that you know it's it's a good fine nib, it, a typical performance from what you would expect in this price range for a steel nib. Uh, the section is quite comfortable, plastic section with uh, rings uh, fore and aft, but uh, fit together well. The fit and finish of the section are real good. The comfort of the writing is really good. Uh, it has that you see it has the raised stop, so you don't. You don't have to worry about it being slippery and, and things like that. It really isn't. Uh, even though it's glossy, I don't find it to be all that slippery. But comfortable to write with, well-balanced. Can you or can't you uh, post this? Yes, you can, and that's that's pretty secure. It's going to make it imbalanced, so I would write with it unposted. But it can be done. Uh, very, very nice. I'm, if I stop every now and then, I apologize. I'm just looking at the resin. That's what happens when I review a resin pen. Uh, I get distracted. I just think they're cool. Uh, you can see there the depth. Let me show you that. Get that gl glare out of the way. See the depth there? And of course, in the orange, uh, you can see through in parts. Really, really cool. And there is some, you can see that there's some sparkle in that black. My lights, just, just the wrong spot for you to really catch that well. But see there? Really, really cool. I like that. So, uh, standard Moonman uh, International converter. I have this loaded up with uh, J. Urban, uh Eclat de Saphir, Sapphire Blue. But nicely done. I like the pen. Uh, their uh, converters usually fit on real, uh, real well. Not loose or no rattle. You hear that? No rattle. So that's always a good thing. Let me do this this way too, just so, yeah. So it's all nice and secure, and I didn't even make a mess, which is good because I don't want to get it on the desk. So nicely done. I think the, the fit and finish of this pen are very, very good. Uh, size comparison. Let's see what we have here handy. This is a Jinhao uh, X. What is this one? Because I always get the numbers backwards. This is the 750, right? Yeah. This is the 750. So that gives you an idea, size-wise, a bit longer than the Jinhao, probably a very similar diameter. I'll put the specs up here, and you can check those out for weight and length and all of that good stuff. And then I have, let's see, this is a rollerball. So was that Jinhao X750, by the way. This, this is a rollerball. This is not their fountain pen. Uh, if you didn't know that you can get that, you can. Uh, I'll review that someday when I re review things that I write with when I'm not using a fountain pen. There is the, the cross-century roller ball that gives you an idea. You might have one of those around, or if not you, maybe your grandpa. <laughs> and this is the Wingsung uh, 3013. So that gives you an idea. Those are, let me put this here so that you can get an idea too, it's because of that camera angle. Uh, so length is very, very similar, uh, but... The M600 is uh, a bigger pin in diameter. It's kind of interesting because when you look at the pictures of this, if you're not familiar with it already, or maybe you've never had a Parker uh, do a fold in your hand at all, then you might think this is a small pin. If you have the M800, you might just assume a hey, 600 that's going to be smaller, right? You know, kind of the way Pelican does, but that's actually not the case. Uh, this actually is a, a good sized pin in width and length. So uh, keep that in mind when you're ordering it. It's not, a, it's not a small pen. That other pen, and I forget the model number of this. Does it on there? Let me see. Well, that's unusual. Jinhao usually puts it on there, but it's not on there. That's a Jinhao that I just got this week. I ordered it a long, long time ago, and uh, that's real wood. Really nicely done. I'll review that later on. But if you have something like that, that gives you an idea of the size of the pen. So there you go. All right, let's see how this writes. I'm not going to post this. This is the Moon Man. If you didn't know that by now, you know it. You know it now. This is the M 
600S and it has a fine nib and this is Pelican Royal Blue. This is kind of a, uh, a daily driver ink for me, and that's why I put it in this pen. I know, you know, there's kind of a, a trend to always have a complementary or a matching ink to a pen, but uh, sometimes I just want my normal workhorse blue in a pen that looks cool, and I, I don't worry about matching or complementing or anything like that. I just want, my, I want to be able to use it every day on things that I do that are everyday tasks. So that's what this is about. I'm going to be quiet and let you listen to this. Pretty smooth. I've had good experience with Moon Man. I almost said Moon Man. Moon Man nibs. Uh, and so, and this number six nib. So, I generally end up leaving them in. I do have plans to uh, swap maybe one or two of them out in a different pen here and there. Uh, probably in that M800. I'm probably going to switch that nib out. Uh, not necessarily anything against the Moon Man, except that I'd kind of like a, uh, a stub in that pen, I've decided. Kind of on a stub kick at the moment. Let's see here. I'm going to tell you that I think it is quite smooth. Not smoothest, but quite smooth. Uh, it's not anything that I would push flex for. This is meant to just be a normal steel nib. Wetness? Let's check that. Not overly wet. I think that's pretty good. Someday y'all are going to wonder if I can even write past the letter H or I. <laughs> I just kind of keep going till the paper goes out. Uh, but, but I'm going to quit on that one. Because now I'm laughing at myself. Okay, and these are just random things that help us see, you know, different angles of how that writes. That's the Moon Man. If you write really quickly, it does keep up. Uh, no problem there. I think this was an angle problem on mine because I wasn't really being that careful. But it, it writes really well, and so I, I really like this pen. Uh, it's kind of funny. That tiger eye... Uh, maybe not the thing that I would have picked first, but it grew on me as I kept going back and looking and trying to decide which color I wanted to get. Uh, it just slowly grew on me, and I actually really like it, especially this side where there's a greater bit of the orange. Really, really like that. So uh, that is the Moon Man 600 S. Uh, great pen, good writer, really well made, and fits great in the hand. You know, uh, it's a comfortable pen to write with. So if you're looking for something along those lines, a little bit more unique for uh, maybe an everyday carry pen that's more affordable, I think that's a great option. So check that out, the Moon Man M600S. So God bless you. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and have a great week.